Selecting financial strategies. This is part of the BUSS3 syllabus. However, you will have covered some of this in your BUSS1 and BUSS2. Let's start with the basics. Sources of finance. These are things you should know from AS. So, let's start with internal sources of finance. This is money that can be raised internally, so within the business, inside the business. So, good examples of this are things like retained profit, so using the profits that you've made from previous years, that's called retained profit, or the sale of assets, so selling off some of your assets, so you turn them into cash, and then you can obviously use this to invest in the organisation. Of course, remember that if you retain profit, then you're not giving that to your shareholders, so think about how your shareholders feel they're not impressed with that idea because they want to get some form of return back on their shares they bought and that will lower their dividend payments so that can cause you a problem later on if they all start selling their shares sale of assets again can be a problem because if you start selling your assets off then what are you going to use in the future? are you going to lease some? then that's going to increase your costs or are you then going to be just sort of what they call retrenching getting smaller in your business because you decided you want to sell off assets to shrink in size but then what does that do to your economies of scale and your long-term growth strategies? So remember, there's always a counter-argument to things like this. Alternatively, you can have an external source of finance. Now, this is obviously money outside of the business. Obvious one to you will be a bank loan or selling of shares. Or you could debt factor. Remember, that's when you sell off your bad debt to somebody else. Now, again, you've got to think about this. You shouldn't really need to debt factor too many debts because you should be on top of collecting in your payments. So if you are allowing your debtors to actually have exceptionally long periods of time without paying you and it's rooking up bad debt, then you need to obviously do something about that. So that's obviously bad. So that's poor management and poor financial management organisation. Sale of shares is normally a good way because it's getting in capital on the cheap as such. You're not going to pay any interest. However, you're also selling a share of your organisation. And in theory, you've got to pay them a dividend. And you've got to reinvest some of the profit at some point. But shareholders are not keen on that because they want the profit going back into their pocket, not back into the company. So you get this conflict happening. Bank loan, fairly obvious. You're going to pay interest on one. And that's going to be a cost to the organisation. And then you've got these things called short-term finance, long-term finance, and you've got medium-term. We'll come to that in a minute. So short-term tends to be when you have to pay debts back within one year. So an overdraft is a typical example of that. Or paying your creditors, people you owe money to, one year. Long-term is finance it takes longer than three years. So that's typically like your bank loan or your mortgage, where you're going to pay it back over a longer period of time. Now, medium-term, is it anything in between the one and three? That's as simple as that. That's where medium term fits in. Fairly straightforward, fairly obvious. Okay, internal sources of finance that we tend to get. So, some internal for sources of finance you may get are retained profits. So, that's using profits that you've made in the previous year and reinvesting it. Sale of assets, so selling off items that you own. Sale and lease back. Now, that's a bit like a sale of asset, only you're leasing it back. Remember, all of those three methods are going to bring in short term internal sources of finance. The problem with it is that once you sell off your assets, so then they're no longer yours and you've got to pay for them. So in that case, they're selling lease back, you actually got to rent it back. What an example of a company that failed, think of Woolworths. Woolworths sold off lots of their high street stores to landlords. They don't have to lease them back paying rent. They couldn't afford the rent and in the end it was a rent which toppled them over the edge because their day-to-day -day cash flow was in a poor position. Then we have... External sources of finance, and typically you've got your things such as your share capital, so that's shares. So selling your shares to shareholders, and it's called ordinary share capital. You've got your bank loans. So, again, fairly straightforward. You just got to go to the bank, ask to borrow some money. Again, that's a long-term solution, typically. You've got your overdraft, which is a short-term solution to cover any short-term debts. And then you've got this thing called a debenture. Now, a debenture is what's known as a long-term loan. So it's one of these things that people find more complex to get their head around. However, it's really simple to understand. All you've got to do with a debenture is remember that it's a long-term loan that's made at a fixed percentage rate of interest and you have to repay it by a certain date. So you've got a set date, you're going to pay that amount of interest, it doesn't fluctuate the Bank of England, and that is it, that's a debenture. It's a little bit different to a bank loan where the interest rate may fluctuate. Another aspect of the course that needs to be covered at BUSS3 is this thing called profit centres. Now, probably in your BUSS2, you've already looked at the whole idea of a cost centre and a revenue centre. And a profit centre is basically just calculating exactly that. 
And all a profit centre is, is within your business, you split it into smaller sections. So, for example, we might do it to functional areas like your marketing department, your finance department, your operations department, your human resources department, and your ICT department. And each of those is what we would call a profit centre. So each of those is responsible for its own revenue generation and its own costs. And we can use that then as a tool to measure how well they're performing. So we're just splitting it up into smaller sections. That's all a profit centre is. And obviously all the little profit centres go towards the overall profit of the organisation. So why might we do this? Well, typically you want to do profit centres because it allows you to benchmark. Now that means compare in simple terms. So, so you can compare between the different functional areas. So you can see how well one is performing to another. Is one more profitable than another? Now you have to be careful with this because think about it. Some functional areas will be expensive by their very nature. So, oh, they may be just a cost purely, and they don't bring in much money. So, you've got to bear that in mind, but obviously it does allow for comparison to be made. You've got the ability to focus on the finance of the organisation. It does actually prevent waste, because people are more sceptical to spend money knowing that they've been measured on this. And it tends to increase the motivation levels in the organisation. So, it tends to make people feel more motivated and it feels it make them feel better about themselves T typically because they're responsible they've got some responsibility for spending their budget they're given an element of money to spend they've got to try and maximize their profit and they may get a bonus that's given to them if they achieve that so linking in Taylor's theory of pay with a bonus there and obviously linking in Hertzberg Maslow's theory of obviously trying to empower you and give you some respect however Typically, some people argue they demotivate. Some people argue that people don't like responsibility. Some people feel pressurised because they've got to try and conform and meet the standards of other departments. It can actually create a diseconomy of scale. Because you're not using the specialist skills of an accountant all the time, you're allowing to different functional areas to start managing their costs. They may not have the expertise. They may not have the large-scale capacity to do this in the most efficient way possible. So everybody's doing this job at different times in different ways, and it's not efficient, and that can give you a diseconomy of scale. And it can be difficult to allocate all the costs. So, for example, what's going to happen with the marketing cost? So, if you do a sales promotion, who actually gets it? Do marketing get the actual reward for the fact that they're selling more items? Or do the operations department get the bigger reward because they're actually they're the ones producing it and maybe the quality's increased? That's what they'll argue, their sales are increased. Do ICT get it because the website's been updated? So, who actually gets the benefit of the profit centre or the cost centre? And this is where debates can break out. So some people are not convinced about it. Some just think it's a bureaucratic process that uh, gives no benefit to organisation. Others say in large business, it's the only way to manage it. Okay, that's it. You should now be aware of the different sources of finance that exist for an organisation and the difference between short-term and long-term options of finance. You should be able to impact, so assess the impact that a cost centre has on an overall organisation. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can tweet me any areas of business that you want me to cover in the future. And remember to check out my website, bebusinessb.co.uk.